welcome. So what I have is the cosine, um, cosine of squared x times the secant squared of x minus 1. And what I want to do is we want to simplify this. So what I'm going to do is when I initially look at um, any trigonometric function squared, I automatically think of uh, using my Pythagorean identities. Now, I have cosine squared of x. Now, I could convert that using Pythagorean identity, but I kind of like it in the simplified form, right? Even though um, I do uh, um, understand that it could be due 1 minus sine squared. However, let's see if we can simplify the secant squared of x minus 1. So to do that, we need to remember our trigonometric identity that states that 1 plus tangent squared of x equals the secant squared of x. And hopefully not going all the way off the camera there. So if I was to figure out what um, the secant squared of x uh, minus 1 is, I would subtract the 1 over there. And I'd see that tangent squared of x equals the secant squared of x minus 1. So that's important because I can now replace secant squared of x minus 1 in for tangent squared of x. So therefore, I'll write cosine squared of x times now the tangent squared of x. OK, so now to get to this point, I still can't kind of simplify anything, right? It's, it's still this cosine squared times tangent squared. But however, I can use the quotient identity to now re rewrite what the tangent is. So I have cosine squared of x times the tangent squared of x. That can be written as the sine squared of x over the cosine squared of x. And now what you notice is when I multiply this through, I have a cosine of x on my numerator and a, or I'm sorry, a cosine squared of x as the numerator and a cosine squared of x as the denominator. Therefore, these simply divide out to give me 1, leave me with the sine squared of x as my final simplified solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. Please make sure you subscribe. Thanks.